On today's Maker Mashup, we're adding NeoPixels to the SKR version 1.4. So on today's Maker Mashup, we're going to be working on hooking up NeoPixels. And if you've not used these before, they are individually addressable LEDs. Marlin has support for them natively, and now the SKR version 1.4 has a NeoPixel pin right on the board. So we're able to hook this up directly and get NeoPixel support and add some LEDs to our 3D printer. So what we're going to do is first solder a lead just like this one where we have 10 NeoPixels and a connector that's gonna go into our SKR version 1.4 board. And then we're gonna print one of these, which is just this little light bar, and it will hook up to 2020 extrusion. And then after that, we're gonna place the LEDs inside the bar, and then we'll attach this to our printer hook this up to the main board, the SKR version 1.4. And then after that, we'll configure Marlin so that way we can uh, control these lights. We'll also go into the M150 command where you can customize G-code or whatever else you want to have custom colors during your printing cycles. So with all that said, let's get to work. So let's get started. We've got 10 NeoPixels here and that's on one strip. Links for it are in the description. Regular old piece of ribbon cable. I've separated three wires and then a connector, which we're gonna have to make to fit onto the board itself. Now we're just gonna strip some wire and then after that, we're gonna go ahead and solder the leads. While working on this project, I found I was also going to need a 330 ohm resistor and a 1000 microfarad capacitor. These are to make sure that the signal peaks are leveled out and it doesn't overload the NeoPixels. We start by soldering the 330 ohm resistor onto the NeoPixels. Then we cover up everything with some shrink tubing to make sure it doesn't short on the capacitor. Now we're going to want to solder on the ground and the 5 volt lines and then we're going to place a capacitor on top here very gently. And then finally we're going to use some shrink tubing just to make everything look neat and provide some relief for the capacitor and the wires. Crimping these connectors can be a little tricky but it's well worth a little bit of practice. I have the link to this crimpers and these connectors in the description. Now we're going to peel off the backing to the NeoPixels. And then after that, we're going to insert it into our 3D print. And then I use this skewer to help push it down into the groove into the print. So now I'm just going to attach this light bar to the 2020 extrusion with a couple of T-nuts. Finally, we're going to attach the NeoPixels to the main board. So now we're inside Marlin and we're going to want to find NeoPixel underscore LED and we're going to uncomment that to enable it. And then under the NeoPixel type, we need to change this to underscore GRB for the type of NeoPixels we have. And then lastly, we need to change the NeoPixel pin and set that to P1 underscore 24 for the NeoPixel pin on the SKR version 1.4. So now when we start a new print, you're going to see that it's going to light up each individual NeoPixel LED. And as it does that, it's going to change from a cool blue to a bright red as it heats up the print bed and the nozzle. The NeoPixels look far more impressive with the lights out. I've modified my startup script so that way it shows a blue light when it's homing the printer. And then once it starts, it's gonna change that LED to white so it illuminates the entire print bed. 
So let's see how we change these colors manually. Marlin has an M150 command and with it you can set the colors and any variations of RGB and white. I use this to modify my startup script, but you can modify it anywhere in your G-code. You can see here if I enter M150 and then I issue a blue of 128 and a red of 128, it will mix those and become a purple. If I increase the intensity to 255, it makes it brighter. Finally, entering one M150 by itself will turn off the light. So overall, this was a pretty easy project to do. I do want to talk a little bit more about the capacitor and the resistor. When I started working on this project, it was pretty clear from some other directions that I had read online that the capacitor and resistor were optional. In practice, though, it seems that I was running into communication problems, especially when I used a longer lead of wire to route through the 3D printer it would end up not lighting a particular pixel or it had communication issues overall. So doing a little research, I found that that capacitor and resistor that we did in the video uh, will stabilize those power lines and the data line. So that way you get a clear signal to the NeoPixels. And the end result was that it worked perfectly. So the big takeaway here is that if you do run into trouble with a project, seek out some additional resources or information. And a lot of times that's all you need to go from something that isn't working very well to working exactly how you want it. And our channel Discord is a great place that you can do that as well. Um, down in the links below, you'll see a link to our Discord, which is really a great big maker space. And uh, you can get a lot of help from other people that are experts in 3D printing, experts in CNC or electronics. So people that do this, for a living and also as a hobby, a lot of those people hang out in our Discord, really some brilliant people. So check it out and uh, you'll find that there's a lot of people there almost 24 hours a day to help you with your projects and things that you're working on. So I have down in the description links for all the products that I used today, including these NeoPixels. This was a, a very large roll of NeoPixels. I only needed a few for the project. And then I also have links to the capacitors and the resistors and everything else all down in that description. So check that out. So with that, we're gonna call this the end of today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you mash that like button and don't forget to subscribe and share this video with other makers so that way they can see how they can put some NeoPixels on their 3D printer pretty quickly. So with that, we're gonna say thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.